Well, since you're so determined to keep your secret, then by all means, why don't you fill me in? You did offer. You promised you wouldn't tell. How could you do this to me? Do what? What is so bloody confidential that you had to invent some sort of a cockamamie cover story about going off to Paris? And what does this fine citizen have to do with it? It's none of your business. Look, there's no point in hiding this, Dixie. You're right. You should know. The trip to Paris was a diversionary tactic. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> There's no deep, dark secret here. Dixie chose to be secretive because she's been in New York City with me. New York City? Yeah, yeah. All night dance clubs, poetry slams, carriage rides through Central Park. You getting the picture? Or do I need to draw you a map of Manhattan, including the floor plan to my loft? Oh. <laughs> no, it won't be necessary. Your taste in men is as questionable as ever. Thank you. Jailbait, Dixie? Ooh, how old are you, anyway? Well, old enough to know a beautiful woman when I see one. Uh, how's your eyesight, speaking of age? <laughs> ah, well, he's not as quite as uh, pathetic as some of your former paramours. But just don't flaunt your cradle robbing in front of Junior. Please, Adam, I would never do anything to upset Junior. Right enough. I'm happy for you. If this is your current cup of pleasure, then fine. Drink it up, by all means. It'll make what I have to say to you even easier. Oh, no. Grant me a moment alone with the mother of my son, please. No problem. I'll get some air. Mm. <sighs> All right, Adam. What fresh hell are you about to spring on me this time? Dixie, your life is your own. I promise you that. But my family is important to me, especially around the holidays. I understand that, all right, and I, I appreciate that, but I already promised Uncle Palmer that Junior and I would be staying but, with him. But Junior needs his family around him. Well, there's a reason he calls Uncle Palmer uncle. Well, there's a reason he calls me daddy. Haley needs her brother. Haley and Mateo have been through a terrible time lately. And Haley needs her family around her right now, and quite frankly, so do I. If I could have my son beside me at Christmas, it would be an answer to a prayer. Do you remember last year? I bought him a fishing pole for Christmas. I never got a chance to see him unwrap it. But that summer, he learned how to use that pole. And I'm the one who taught him. I'm the one who held his hand in mine while, he, while I taught him how to cast my hand, his hand, in my hand. I felt absolutely invincible. And I also felt quite vulnerable because I couldn't help but thinking how long am I going to keep that image in my mind time goes so quickly and contrary to my own PR I am mortal well Junior worships you Adam of course I want him to spend as much time with you as possible that is the greatest gift you could ever give me. All right, well, why don't you just hand me over my Nobel Peace Prize <laughs> and I'll be on my way. What about tonight? If you can, you and could just, just spend the night here and go to Palmer's tomorrow. <laughs> you are so pushy. You are never satisfied, are you? Well, not unless I have to be. Just think about it. Okay, think. You can have your paramour back. Go ahead. Say it. If you were packing a 45 right now, I'd be a dead man. Look, Dixie, I'm sorry I trashed your reputation. I just told your ex we were doing the mattress mambo up and down Fifth Avenue. You never said anything of the kind. Only in Adam's dirty little mind does a, a, a carriage ride and a poetry slam equal a torrid affair.
Then you're not mad at me? No. No, I, I appreciate it, actually. It was a very good cover story, only now there's a lot of cover stories out there, and I can't keep track. I mean, Tad thinks that I have dumped him, and that Junior's just staying here to finish school. Palmer thinks I've recovered completely. Uh, Adam thinks I'm having an affair, and I Opal thinks something else. I can't remember what exactly it was. I can't keep these stories straight. Well, just leave that to me. I'm a whiz at cover stories. I'll be your backup. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy, could I use a drink. Well, it's just too bad you're on an alcohol-free diet, isn't it? Here. Some nice water. <laughs> Thank you. You were talking to Adam about Christmas. You want him to get closer to his son in case you're not around, don't you? Junior needs somebody that he knows and loves and trusts. Of course, with Adam, only two of those really apply. You never really can trust Adam. But if this is going to be my last Christmas... No. You've always got hope, Dixie. I know you can beat this thing. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I was wondering if Dixie had thought about, uh, this evening, tonight. Oh, yes, of course. Um, yes, Junior and I would be very, uh, happy to stay here. Wonderful. I'll have Winifred make up your room. Will there be towels for one or two? I better shove off. I'll give you a call tomorrow, okay? Okay. <laughs> Not one word about Braden. Not a word. I'm going to go tell Junior that we're spending the night. Mm. Thank you. Perfect. Almost perfect. We need one more. With one on the way. This family will be complete. Don't get me. Didn't tell you what was wrong? No, she just left me a message, asked me to meet her at Wildwind. Where's that scotch you promised me, Chandler? Who is that? It's, it's, keep your shirt on, Owen. It's, it's, it's business, nothing. Uh, tell Haley I love her. And uh, if, if she needs me, call. I will, all right. And I'll be back in time to tuck Junior in. About time. Since I first became aware of the situation, I've monitored it very closely. You've been a great help, Owen. My daughter and her husband have been going through hell. Having a little tyke with them will add some light to their lives. Yeah, the least I could do to help such a valuable friend. 